How is there sound? Can anyone hear me now? Ha ha ha. Ha ha. I must turn that thing on. I mustn't forget. Or I look foolish if I do. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, how do you hear me now? How do you read me now? When I'm doing this and stuff and saying that, that's me saying, I know you can't hear me. I know. Uh, so yeah, how do I look? How do I sound? Can we hear? Can we, can we, uh, stuffs? Can we stuffs? Uh, sounds good. Sweet. Sounds good. Good. Better than no sound, right guys? Uh, uh, happy Sunday, happy Father's Day to anybody who, uh, uh celebrates, whether you're, uh, a parent or a mentor to somebody, or as I said during our, uh, our Q&A, uh, it could be louder, I'll crank my, I'll crank my soldier boy, um, whether you're just like a father to many, you know, you're a proud father to board games and stuff, whatever it is, uh, it's all eared. Um, we're happy to have you, happy to celebrate you. Um, just go out there and be like a good um, person today, whatever that means. All right. You know what I'm saying? I can crank this up a little bit more too. Sweet, 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 sweet. Volume feels low. Is it any different now? I've turned it up, it's much louder in my ears. Um, so you can't make out the words. Is it really quiet? Is it louder now? It's showing up decently in the thing. I can get like right up on the mic as well. But of course, I don't want to hurt your ears or anything like that. So let me know and I'll fiddle with it. Fiddle with it. Um, but yeah, happy Sunday. Hopefully, it's been a good one. Today's been pretty chill for me. I um, It's been, well, chill meaning busy, but busy is good. I uh, uh, Cool. Mag, uh, Magritte, thank you so much for that. Let me know, folks, how it, how it sounds and all that. I want to I wanna sound real good for you. I got the sexy mic on today because it's a sultry Sunday. I can bring it on down like this. Um, but yeah, so today we, what did we do? We recorded an episode of This Game is Broken, uh, which Kiki hosted. that will be coming out on the 10th of July, rad. And we went right into a live Q&A, went right into a meeting to plan out for uh, when we're going to be all in Dice Tower Con together and how we're going to do that. We set the um, the games and stuff for our live show. So I don't know if anyone in here is going to be at Dice Tower Con, but you've got to come to the show. It's going to be so flipping fun. It's stupid. Uh, I can't wait. It's going to be so great. It's going to be on Saturday night. Um, right at the height of it, so we're going to try to pack that thing. Every round will have audience participation, but not in a stressful audience participation way. It's, you'll be kicked back in the seats and basically we'll be invited to yell at us through the entirety of the show, uh, which is good. We respond well to that, Nick and I especially. Um, we just don't really respond unless someone says, hey, asshole. We're like, what was up? Yeah, what do you need? Uh, so yeah, uh, we're super excited. But uh yeah, cannot wait. So happy Sunday again. Happy Father's Day to all uh, folks who who uh, just care about someone in the world, which I think is everybody. Uh, David Phillips, uh, especially happy Father's Day to you, sir, because um, I know your father. Uh, <laughs> so if I know specifically, I'll give it specifically. But in, and if I can't, I will uh, give it generally. Uh, Alexander is celebrated by selling tons of steaks. Hey, Amen. I, I, I took about a two-mile walk home from a game day to come do this and uh it, it smelled like barbecue for the entire two miles i was like okay so this is a thing obviously not no surprise and uh cooked meat is great i ate cooked meat today it was fantastic good day for grilling although it's interesting because usually the fathers do the grilling so i'm like isn't that sort of don't they shouldn't they have the day off but maybe this is like their happy place and that's what they want to be doing and that's the point right get to do something you want to do uh, marzalian says yeah we met nick and talked for a bit yesterday at origins wish you could have been there too it's like, without me, you realize that, man, Nick's, Nick's got a pretty grating personality. It's tough. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's cool. So did you, like, swing by the booth? Uh, where was he? Was he just running around being like, ah, I got long hair? Or, you know, like, what was he What was he up to? And hopefully he left a good impression. Uh, it seems like he's been having fun. I haven't talked to him that much because he's just been, like, at wheeling and dealing and at the booth and, you know, slanging them games and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Helen says, uh, better, uh, tough to hear on my computer speakers, but good on headphones. Um, rad. Keep letting me know, folks. I can, I can keep, uh, here, here, here. Let me, let me turn my earphones down. I don't need to hear my voice that much. Maybe I can turn my gain up a bit. Um, <laughs> McGrady says, Mike, you are evil. I'm totally addicted to Stardew Valley now. You're welcome for that. It's, it, 
<laughs> it pulls you in. It's do I every time I log in, it tells me how long I've played. And it's like 75 hours. And and like, you know, a lot of uh, video games can suck you in for a long time, but I'm like, yo, that's yeah, that's, man, that's a lot of hours. I've just been staring at my phone, and that's just the one. And then I have now this next one that's going to be on the computer. I'm going to be playing again on Thursday night. And so then it's just like, oh, man, it's just so much time. But I just, I get I get excited because my farm is getting stupid big. I got fields on fields. We're in fall, peak season. Got a lot of stuff going. Planning for the future. I got money. I'm just sitting on dumb money. So hopefully it's been enjoyable for you. Um, I've been, uh. I've been loving it. Uh, Dave Phillips says, you made her smile when he said that. I appreciate you, bro. Hey, man, I appreciate you, too. appreciate your whole family. Uh, uh, David Phillips and co. are the good folks, as I as I uh, always like to say. They are, uh, they, uh, they are the folks, which means the good folks. Um, Alexander says, I was joking all day long with my dads, <laughs> with the dads, excuse me, asking them why they were the ones buying the steaks and cooking them. It's, it's like... Yeah, it's kind of a good point. <laughs> you got to go out, buy your own meat, go do a bunch of stuff. But again, I think it's probably like, I'm just not going to deal with anything else. You know what I mean? One thing that's funny is on uh, Mother's Day, so I work at a children's museum. And it's very busy with obviously a lot of parents and stuff. And you do probably see more moms than dads. If there's only one parent, it'll usually be a mom, not a dad. Um and then on Mother's Day, one thing we notice is that it's a quiet day at the museum, <laughs> number one, and there's a lot more just like single dads rolling through because I think the moms, I think, are saying like, I'm not going back there again. Not today. It's my day. I don't want to do it. And uh, you just see very few of the moms. And I'm like, right on, man, because you're putting in mad hours. Talking about putting in mad hours, putting mad hours into that museum. Uh, which is amazing. So, uh, uh, okay, okay, Slivers. Everyone uh, give crap to Slivers. And by that, I mean give him crap for beating himself up for not having a list for today. We are going to cruise Kickstarter the old school way. How every other Yahoo out here on the internet has to do it. You just scroll and buy stuff you weren't expecting to. That's the beauty of Kickstarter. And we, uh, as Slivers is a father, and happy Father's Day again, Slivers. Uh, I'm glad you didn't take time out of your day to do that. Uh you should be doing other things. You, you just squeaked out a win in Forbidden Island. That's what I, that's my gift to you, what I could have given you, because uh, I have nothing in life. No, I have lots of things, but you know, I, that, that's what I just take the day off, man. Enjoy games with your kids. That's what it's about. That's life. Uh, and I'm going to help other people spend money. All right. That's, that's what I'll be doing over here. Um, uh, Marzion says, I caught him on the way in, into the con. Okay. Uh, we talked for a few minutes about the con and a bunch of stuff, uh, and his personality wasn't that grating, but you were the one that did exit the conversation. You said, okay, I think you gotta get to the booth, right? You gotta get over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go, 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 go. JK. I love that dude. Um, so much. I miss him. I'm not going to see him until next weekend. Maybe like <laughs> he's, so he's coming in, I think late tomorrow. So he won't be here for the stream tomorrow, the Gen Con stream. And then he's working Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday uh, uh, at his feet first job, his, his, uh, his like, uh, team building job. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not having good words. Uh, so he's going to be, we're going to have a Nicholas week this week. Uh, so I hope you, that you all will join me um, and uh, come party down. So tomorrow I'm gonna be playing a solo game on Gen Con's channel. Tuesday, uh, Hippie Penguin herself, Karen is gonna join me for some games. And then on Thursday, I'm gonna play Stardew Valley. And then we'll have Nick back. So uh, it's a bummer that uh, just, he ain't around, man. He's doing great things though, and hanging out at uh, Origins and Got Lanterns Dice. And that's literally all I care about. I'm so excited. I can't wait. We're 25 bucks, Renegade. Just the best my favorite company my favorite company that isn't my sponsor is restoration games which sounds like renegade games and i mix it up once in a while embarrassingly uh is great as well um man frosty fire says i remember when my rocket league time passed a thousand hours i was ashamed yet highly proud at the same time i think that's a good a good feeling to have you're just like wow but that's also pretty cool that I did that because that's hard to do a thousand hours of anything. You're one tenth of the way to being a master at Rocket League, right? You can master anything in 10,000 hours, right? To be Michael Jordan of Rocket League, just got to multiply that 10 times. Uh, Spracknell up in your hug and slivers. Y'all, how dare you? How dare you? 
Um, and happy Father's Day, says Helen Adams. Uh, totally uh, enjoy the day and don't worry about it. We shall manage somehow. We're going to manage. We got a Kickstarter. Look, it's right here. If the thing is on, and I'm pretty sure it is. It's right there. Look at that. Look at Kickstarter. Look at that. It's doing its thing. It's being all Kickstarter-y and like, we got, we got, we got games here, it says. And I'm like, whoa, that's crazy, man. You got games. Um, games for sale. Uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Mormo. Hi. Um, and Helen says, uh, Lantern's Dice, so excited about that one. Me too. I, I don't know if I was saying this live the other day or just talking, but like, I suppose it's silly, but I'm pretty into this sort of trend of redoing games that exist. <laughs> like, I shouldn't, like, do I need two versions of Lanterns? No, but like, this one has dice, ooh! And like, Sushi Roll, cannot wait for it. And I'm, you understand how crazy I am. I'm getting super excited for dice versions of games that I already love where I, and Dice don't love me, and I'm like seeking out versions of games that now are going to be pretty much impossible for me to win because I have to touch a die to do it. And yet I can't wait. I cannot wait. So just a little bit of peek into the madness of this old boop noodle right there. Uh, so we're gonna click through some of this uh, Kickstarter business right here. We got stuff, fam. We got stuff up on I saw someone post this on Twitter. I have no idea what it is, but since it was in my brain and I saw it, I clicked, how oh, dare you, dang it. I clicked, control click, but maybe I should have done right click or something. Oh, where am I now? Dang it, my whole life fell apart. Anyway, I'm gonna click on that in a moment. Sorry for the quick scrolling. Oh, what? Young Mage Kickstarter. Um. Okay, sweet, 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 sweet. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna scroll through this business right here. Um, Dave Phillips says, familiarity sells. I'm more willing to buy something I recognize. I think that's part of it. I think that's part of it because um, I know I love Sushi Go. I know I love Lanterns. They're two of like my favorite games. Um, and just the idea of like, let's take something we know and how can we flip it on its head a little bit? How can we rework this? I think shows a level of creativity and thought. So it gives me like a lot of belief in whatever that thing is. And then it's also mixed off of being, there's a foundation there that I'm like, yes, this, this is, has historically been a good thing. Um, so yeah, I think, I think maybe it is a familiarity, but I, I'm pumped. I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> And then, oh my God, I, Nick just sent me a teaser. Does anyone know anything about this? King Domino Duel. It's a roll and write version of King Domino that I think is also a two player edition of King Domino. Like if you could make something for me that is like based off something, I can't, it's gonna be so, I don't even care. That game is gonna be amazing. I don't care. And I see how something like King Domino could easily become a roll and write thing where you Roll dice, and that's a land type. Okay, where do I put the land types in my little grid and things? I'm like, it's just a no-brainer. But then, like, the that I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But then the fact that it's a duel, which suggests a one versus one, and I'm like, well, how does that work? No, now I'm excited. So I can't wait to see what that's all about. <sighs> King Domino Legacy. That'd be kind of sweet. <laughs> you put your crowns on, <laughs> you stick your crowns on your things. So like, now you got all these forest crowns. I don't want them, but you're stuck. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Helen Adams says, I played Dust in the Wings at BGG Spring, and it was amazing. I think it might have been a uh, Five Tribes killer for me. So what is this game? I love Five Tribes. Is it similar, like Mancala, big puzzly type game? Because I could be interested. I do love uh, Feed Tribes. Let's see. Did it, we played a Nation's Dice game twice, and both times one player got discouraged because the dice rolls gave them no possible actions. See, that's something you don't want. That's the tricky thing with dice. If you if you can dice it where you're literally multiple times completely SOL, that's not as fun. And there's something I was playing recently where I had, uh, it was a, a Dice Throne, and I love that game. I want to play it again real bad. But I was doing really good, and I had two rounds in a row where my luck became my luck, and I rolled nothings 
And the thing I like about that is like it's kind of on me. I set, I set some dice aside. I said I'm going to try to go for this one thing. And I didn't get it, and I and I tried to go for something difficult, but it was it was a little bit like, oh, that sucks. But again, I kind of made my bed, so I can't be too mad about it. But yeah, I get how like that kind of sucks. You know, you're like, well, I don't. This isn't as fun. <laughs> you know, if you're just like. You want the dice it, it inject luck into a game, but if it's only luck, then that's gonna not always work out so great. So, um, yeah, and Sam Banana says Lanterns is a great game. I can't wait for the dice game too. Exactly, like I love Lanterns. I love that game, and if you can remix in some way, um, I'm here for it. Um, there you go. Yeah, I'll see. Marzana says, it's actually a fun idea, the crowns being stickers and all. I mean, if you could, like, personalize tiles and stuff in some way, and then you keep... Especially if those tiles were something where it's like, you build up this... You have, like, a, a four-crown tile. It's a double forest, four-crown tile. Something crazy. But then in future games and stuff, it might not be guaranteed that you will get that tile back. So it's like this, like, do I want to load up this thing and hope and make sure I get it? Or do I want to, you know, try to spread things out so nothing can happen? I don't know. Like, there's there could be something there. I, I don't anticipate we'll ever see King Domino Legacy unless Dave Phillips is being real. Uh, but I, I could see, you know, there's always potential there. I'm like, well, that's something more to think about. Uh, so Helen says about this, uh, the game that I forgot the name of, The Dust in the Wings. Uh, it's Mancala combined with shifting goals, so it plays a bit more tactically, and you have to think on your feet more. So it'll shift, like, the goals will shift mid-game. So that's pretty cool, where you're like, I was, oh, I gotta do this now, because that'd be kind of sweet. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna start going through some things. I'm, what we're gonna do today, guys, is we're just gonna kind of cruise the, through here. If there's something that you, you really dig, and I'm gonna definitely be clicking on things that seem interesting to me, uh, one thing I know we're gonna make a stop at uh, Dungeon Drop, um, uh, cause we're going to play that next week. I'm going to play that with Karen on Tuesday, uh, because our, our friend, Mr. Lunches, uh, helped us secure a copy of it, a prototype to play, uh, which isn't something we normally do, but I love, uh, Mr. Lunches. And if he says, Hey, this is something that I think would be really fun to check out. We, we take it on his word and we played it and it is fun. So we're going to give that a, give that a look. Um, just for funsies. So let's see. It's a Hearts of Magic, Low Doodle, educational coding board game. I'm curious about that. We're going to see about that. Um, okay, what am I? Cool. Young Mage Kickstarter. Very cool. Ignite a game of crazy combos and epic explosions. Art and Saga trading card game. Nah. Anyway, by the way, if I do uh, scroll right past the thing that you're like excited for, uh, let me know. Tsunami Con. Now, I'm going to click on this because we have been talking more and more about Bing Bong Con and starting to put things together. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of recon uh, just to see. I haven't seen a, um, a con on Kickstarter, I don't think, unless I'm just forgetting, which is very possible. Um, Okay, paraphrase. Songs and other words. Party game will bring a song to your heart and table. I'm curious. I like music-y thingies. Uh, so I'm just going to load up a few of these, then we're going to go through them here in a moment. And uh, again, in the meantime, if anyone's just like, hey, you missed something really cool to me, let me know and I will go back. Um, uh, Mr. Moreau says they shift each goal. That's awesome. Interesting. Uh, Marjana says, maybe you could have a Charterstone type mechanic where you can pick up uh, one tile you own uh, and you get to keep it for the next game. That'd be kind of cool. So if you're building up these things, you can have X amount of things where you get to keep them or you have like two secure ones and you have four and you do a draft or something. So it's like you're going to get some of them, but you might not get all of them. I don't know. You know, like that'd be cool if you could like protect maybe something. And, but not everything, because it'd become every game you do the same exact thing over and over if you got to keep everything. So that'd be kind of cool. Um, <laughs> uh, Dave Phil says, you so easily forget Con on the Cob. That's pretty good. Uh, and yeah, Benjamin Lunches is one of my uh, favorite real names ever. Mr. Lunches is Ben Lunches. Benjamin Lunches, like, destined for greatness. Like, I think there's some power in names sometimes. Like, a Mike Murphy is not going to accomplish much. You're going to get red flagged at airports because some other Mike Murphy out in Ireland is doing something crazy. Uh, and that's about it. But uh, Benjamin Lunches, you're like, you, 
you, you, you will never be a boar. That's just a fact. Um, Ruby Roundup. Let's take a look. It's a frantic race to grab as much treasure as you can while manipulating, denying, and stealing to be continued. And there was the one thing that started this all. Jurassic Park miniature game. Jurassic World miniature game. Okay. This guy, the fight for Rome. I don't. I just saw this got posted by somebody, and I have no idea what it is. So we're gonna take a look at that. Ah, uh, catch up on the chat. Says da 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 da. Um, and, and Helen says the value. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, basically, there's two types of cards talking about uh, dust in the wings. Uh, one which wants you to get a certain combination of colors, and the other that wants you to have a, have certain numbers. Okay, certain. Uh, okay, and the value of the cards increases each turn until they are taken or age out. Fascinating. I'm gonna have to look this game up because it's something that I'm like trying to picture exactly. I mean, I you know I get the Moncala and stuff, but uh, just like how it's all displayed and stuff like that, it's really interesting. I want to see Mo about that. Dust in the wings is the game. Dig your way out looks good this week. Okay, uh, did I pass it already? Do I need to scoop back? Let me know. And if so, I'll go back. If not, let me know uh, when it comes up so I don't uh, pass it up. And you had mentioned dig out earlier. Uh, and I didn't realize you were talking about a game. So I was like, yeah, man, dig out. Oh, yeah, I'll see you, dude. Uh, he says, Mercs, have you demoed Dwellings of Everdale? Seems like every creator has. No. <laughs> I feel like out of, this was like a week and a half ago, I had not heard anything about it. And I still don't know much about the game. But all of a sudden, I just started hearing that name. And I'm boom, 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 boom. And like, yeah, everybody had like done something. And I, I remember noticing, it was like, Jesus, like, we, everyone's covering this one. Okay, uh, so no, we, ha we haven't played it. I don't, I don't know anything about it. Uh, uh, so, yeah. This is uh, the, uh, oops. This is the old. Thank you, sir. Uh, or Sir Ant. Uh, okay, let's take a look at some of these. So, Glow Doodle 101. This will be not something I think anyone, or I will back anyway, but I'm just curious. So, educational coding board game from Hong Kong. Space Adventure Tabletop. Um, hey, they're over halfway to their goal. Right on. Right? No, wait, what? Converted from Hong... Oh, Hong Kong 5000. Oh, I was like, what? A Space Adventure Tabletop game for STEM coding activities in classroom. That's tight. Uh, Screen-free, intangible coding game for two to four players. Get them away from the screens and learn some STEM, which I feel like would be kind of tricky uh, in, in a lot of STEM stuff. You're going to be with iPads and stuff, which is cool. Rad. Okay, so you got all these jewels and things. Right on, right on. So, okay, uh, educational board game kit for teachers to deploy STEM coding activities in the classroom. Race to obtain rare elements like shiny glowium. Students play the role of voyagers. Their mission is to control glow doodle rocket to venture through space and collect precious elements ahead of other voyagers. Game rules have been designed carefully to make learning coding concept much more fun and easier for even young beginners, six and up. Game Kit has also been designed with tangible play-based learning experiential learning in mind. Um, and so they've done some extra testing. After a previous launch, we kept refining Glow Doodle 101 according to further testing trials and comments from our supporters. Okay, so uh, they refined the rules in the game board. Um, okay, then down the production required for it and stuff. So this is cool, man. I, I like the idea of <laughs> I like the idea of more and more play-based education. Play a game. I mean, that's what we do at the museum. Is everything at our museum is open-ended, uh, play-driven stuff, and that you might learn something about nature or art or science. All of our areas of the museum try to hit those three things, but it's all play-based. Um, and really open-ended, you know, asking open-ended questions to get kids thinking about stuff, but while they're just playing. And that's how kids learn. They learn through play and stuff. So anything like this, I'm all for. So that's just cool. I just wanted to check that out real quick. Real cool. Or real cool. Uh, da -da, catching up. Yeah, has anyone heard about like Dwellings of Everdell? Elder, or Eldervale? See, yeah, and that has, to, that has to be happening all over the place, the Everdell Eldervale thing. Which is probably why they named it Eldervale, because it's just like... Um, yeah. David Phillips says, I feel the odd airport generalizations. My name is super generic. I'm not even the only David Phillips at work. Yeah. 
yeah, there are a lot of Michael Murphys out there. I have been red flagged before where they're like, hold on, we see to make sure you're not that Michael Murphy. I'm like, what'd they do this time? Those those Michael Murphys out there? Uh, and be whoops, my friend's dad is John Smith. Always gotta be rough. Yeah, I always gets to look at the airport just like, you sure? So you don't want the wife to know you're flying somewhere, John Smith, huh? Uh, and uh, Helm says, yes, it's Dustin Wings. I'm gonna look that game up. This is Tsunami Con. I don't know what this is. 2019. So, okay, when in 2019? Wichita, Kansas. So if you live near that, you know, Wichita, get up at this con. Tsunami? That'd be a hell of a tsunami to get there. Um, <laughs> if a tsunami hits Kansas, guys, like right now, I'm dead. I'm, I'm long dead. For sure. I can't ride that wave. Uh, it's Wichita's premier tabletop gaming convention. Sick! They're hoping for 3600 bucks. They got 1141, 20 backers. Okay, wow, that's pretty good money off 20 people. So I wonder what the, the thing is. Join us for Sonomy Con. It's on October 18th, 19th, 20th at the Midian Shrine Center in downtown Wichita. Sick. Okay. So excited to present the sixth annual National Tabletop Gaming Convention in America's Heartland. This year we've moved across the street. 10,000 square feet for gaming and events. Not bad. A VIG lounge, I like that one. Very important gamers, man. Uh, there's a marketplace, we want you to join with three fantastic days. Here's some pictures of the area we can play. As always, there's some very cool rewards lined up for backers. As a backer, you get badge price, so you can buy it. This is the way you badge your price. Buy your badge, badge your price. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, badge price is available uh, only to Kickstarter backers. Oh, so like a deal or is it the only way to get tickets? Maybe that's how they do it. I'm curious if this is common for like really small uh, conventions because I could see this as a decent way to manage like ticket sales if you're doing that because like moving money around and stuff is tricky. Although it'd be kind of a bummer where something like this where Kickstarter is going to take a cut of it, but I suppose service fees so that's how you look at that i don't know access to uh, all non-exclusive convention events premium access to exclusive events presented during this campaign eligibility for prize drawings up to and during the event and that march so let's see you can be of eternal gratitude so you can help support for five bucks and you can volunteer you pay five and then maybe be a volunteer and you get tickets so you got to spend some of your time working the con how much if you're just trying to go you get just the dice for ten bucks if you do eight hours so okay hold on so if i go up here sorry just keep rolling around so if you do 12 hours of volunteer work you can pay five bucks and go if you do eight you can pay 20 bucks and go okay 20 bucks is a friday or saturday or friday or sunday pass Okay, and you get shirts and stuff. Day pass Saturday for 25. So what's the big, the vassal? It'll be the vassal of four hours volunteer work, three, 30 bucks and the three day pass. That seems pretty <laughs> worthwhile. Four, four hours of one of your days, eh, why not? Just do the morning of one thing and just play games and teach and do what you'd be doing anyway, you know? Um, 35 for the whole weekend for the early bird. 40 for the non-earlies. Very cool. Would someone, would people, has anyone done this before? Or would you, uh, would you go to a con and, and do it through Kickstarter and stuff to get your tickets? Does that seem like a decent way to go about it? I, again, personally can't recall seeing this, but I, I'm sure it has happened many times. Um, just curious. Uh, catching up here. Uh, da, 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 dig your way out. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, more about because I don't want to miss this business. Uh, my childhood neighbor for 15 years was named Michael Murphy, says Marzalian. See, there's always one. There's always been many Murphys in the school. I've, I've encountered other Michael Murphys um, in school and stuff like that. And uh, it's just a thing. And it's, it's okay. <laughs> just like, you know, I love my name. I, I feel like I am a Mike. I feel like that's, it makes sense. Um, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, see, Cheryl came in, Mike, see, she gets it. She knows I'm a Mike. She gets it. Um, but it's just a funny thing when like they knew damn well my, la my last name was going to be Murphy and they went with Mike and I'm like, you guys, <laughs> they gave me a really unique middle name. And so that's, that's my only, uh, thing I hang on to. I'm the only Michael Lee Murphy with the spelling that I have. 
So that's nice. You can find me on social media. Because if you just type Michael Murphy, you ain't never going to find me. There are way too many to sort through. Oh my gosh, sorry about that, folks. Um, oh, so the Dice Tower did a playthrough of uh, Elder Veil vale thingy. Um, and Zim and S. Lux watched some. What, I mean, if, if anyone can give just a two-sentence kind of what uh, what's its sort of vibe. He says, uh, caught my attention for dwelling to the same designer as Energy Empire, uh, uh, Manhattan Project, Energy Empire, which I love. I need to play that again. I played half of a game of it once, fell in instant love, bought it, played a full game of it, cooled on it significantly. But I played a two-player game, and I think it just needs to be at a three or a four. That's what I'm thinking. Because a lot of people really like that game. And so I'm like, maybe it just didn't have the... It felt very easy to do everything I was trying to do. And I was like, I want it to be a little tougher. Um, Dave Phillips says, I do Bing Bong Con through Kickstarter. I guess that's part of why I'm asking is like, is this something that would be a huge red flag for people? Because if not, I'm like, oh, maybe for Bing Bong Con, which we're putting together, that would be something we'd consider doing. I hadn't thought of that. So I just was, again, just this, what you're witnessing is stream of consciousness, folks. Um... Uh, 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 Sheryl says there is a game con in Cincy, Cincinnati, uh, that uses Kickstarter. I think it helps them collect money to rent the facility. That's the one thing I think is nice is if you're going to a place where it's going to, you know, you get a rent out, so it costs some bones, getting the money ahead of time to make sure, you know, if you don't have the money on hand, like Nick and I don't have a ton of money just sitting around, like something like that might be nice. Uh, so I'm just like, hmm, that's an interesting thought. And the idea is like, it's just your badge passes. We can see if you're a backer and stuff and easily you know, monitor who's registered and stuff like that. I'm like, that might be kind of a decent way to have everything kind of electronically organized. I don't know. Um, and Helen says, I've picked up a couple uh, tickets to cons at Kickstarter. Most of the cons uh, I go to use tabletop events now. Tabletop dot events now. Okay, cool. I'll look into that too. So this is paraphrase songs. In other words... It's gonna bring a song to your heart and table. It's already gotten its goal. Nice. I'm just curious about like, is it like you have to sing different lyrics or gibberish? Can you solve it? Who sang it? Can you sing it? Remember those songs you grew up listening to on the radio on your turntable, eight track tape and stereo on your iPod calling the Wolfman, clap for the Wolfman, or your local DJ and playing a tribute song to your bestie. And how, when you now hear those songs, heartwarming, smile inducing memories come flooding back. In paraphrase songs, in other words, you have to recall the names of hit songs from various decades while only having a few seconds in which to do so. The clues, however, are a paraphrase of the song title, so they aren't as easily recognizable. Can you do it? Can your team members do it? What you talk about, Willis? That's nostalgic. Here's an example. Authentic pigmentations. True colors. Probably the true colors, like that the troll song. That's my guess. Clues are included on each card uh, in case you need a hint, but watch out! Using those hints deducts from the points you can earn. Bonus points are handed out for naming uh, the band or artist, and if your team can sing a portion of the song. It's true colors, it's Justin Timberlake and Anna Kendrick did, I think. I'd crush that, but I'd probably do really bad in general. Um, true colors, but, oh, true, oh, by Cindy Lauper. Okay, so it's based on, a lot of stuff seems based on like the 80s and things. Maybe I'm too, uh, too current. Okay, cool. Are we into it? Paraphrase? We'll see. Boom. Uh, 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 did you get any stuff on Kickstarter so far tonight? We haven't gotten that far into Kickstarter so far, and we're kind of just flying, uh, we're flying uh, just uh, by the seat of our pants here. We're just cruising, so uh, nothing crazy, crazy so far, but we've also been talking about other games that are kind of around uh, and stuff. Uh, Sprackle says, I'd back Bing Bong Con. Uh, thank you. We, we'd hope to see lots of people there. We're still trying to figure out stuff and, uh, and when and how and, you know, what would be a way to do it. So we're going to keep talking to y'all about that. Because uh, I want to know. Dutch Yoda back up in here. How the leg, Dutchie? Since a few hours ago, it's probably the same. That's how it works. Um, <laughs> Helen says, this sounds like an exercise talking about paraphrase that we did in high school English. I still can't get, we all abide in a banana colored underwater boat out of my head. I like that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Zen Bass says, I don't remember too much of Dwellings of Everdell. I was uh, Elder Vale. I was only able to watch her a few minutes. I'll check it out on, on Dice Tower then. I guess that's rather than like, you do the work for me. It's like, you can watch the video your, your damn self. Good. Get out there. You're fine. Um, uh, he, thank you. So uh, Berkey helped us um, make a custom mat for our game topper. So it fits on, on our game topper, our little halfer, halfer topper. Um, and it's like this cool black with our neon. So our neon Brothers Murph um, background that you see like on Twitch and stuff is it's kind of in all that. And then it says played on game toppers right beneath the our logo. So because you can't ever see the game topper logo, it's out in the corner, which like people know because we talk about it uh, all the time how that we're playing on a game topper. But it's nice to have it right there, dude. Brothers Murph played on game toppers. How slick, one of a kind. You know, it looks awesome. I can't wait to see it in person. But Nick was taking pictures and sending me. I was like, whatever. You're cool. I get it. So Ruby Roundup. Frantic race to grab as much treasure as you can while manipulating, denying, and stealing treasures from everyone else. Uh, I just choose things based on colors, folks, if you didn't know. I'm just like, that's kind of bright and pretty. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to see this. You're exploring a strange new world, trying to stake the best claims and make a name for yourself. But so is everyone else making Ruby Roundup. A frantic grab, a uh, race to grab as much treasure as you can while manipulating the thing and what they said before. Filled with zany characters, high quality playing pieces, and packed with hidden secrets and Easter eggs, Ruby Roundup is a light bluffing game that's highly interactive and easy to learn. So you get some uh, contents. Boom. These people did it. Boom. Another final round. Blam. Oh, here's the zany characters 12. I do like the art style. This is looking cool. Stinge the dragon, or yeah, Stinge, yeah, Stinge. Okay, Ruby. Crimson Flame and a Wild West. Yeehaw! Unlimited each time your player marker would be moved from one claim to another. You get to draw a car or a sister. Then when you amass everything, gain a color gem. Pay two color gems, draw a card. Pay two cards, gain diamond. Which I'm assuming is more valuable. Dead. Yes. The stash. Clap it up. Big Bong in the chat for the for the stash, dude, man. I'm telling you. If we can do Big Bong in the chat, probably can't, though. Interesting. Um, okay, so there's like a little bit of... Dude. I love the art. This is fun. This is like a little camel sultan, dude. Sick. Billy the Kid, but he's a kid! He's got little cork coats, and this guy is great! Billy the Kid, because it's a good goat. That's awesome. Okay, so it looks like maybe you have to set collect grab these types of, I don't know, the three cards, and then you got the, the two diamonds and the thing, and then, oh wow. Oh wait, so if you put these together, it makes like, are they all that way? This is cool if it like does like make a tablet. Oh, that's pretty rare. I don't know. Okay, and then what's this going for? Let's see. Well, that's not for us. That's not for us. Oh, three game. Oh, how much for a game? Oh, one game. Two. One game. Okay. Okay. So for forty dollars American, get your Canadian dollars out of here. Get a copy of the game and stretch goals and print and play. Okay, I just want the game part of that. Um. Okay. So forty bucks. What do we think for forty bucks? Not knowing much about this. Trying to get to the gameplay part. So we'll see, like, how do you... Okay. So, yeah. So it looks like you have some little player power, and then you're... Are these, like, plus one treasure per player card here? So maybe, like, multiple people are working on these all together. Okay. You know, some things, if you manage to claim these, get permanent uh, abilities that add on to your normal things. You get these player cards. You can use these to mess with your friends. I mean, I, I definitely dig the art and stuff. It's cool. I mean, I guess it's like a little bluffy, take that y thing. Um, oh, different win conditions. So you get the red rubies, the ruby rush, or the sapphire swarm, or emerald explosion, turquoise tsunami, the mocha maelstrom. That's pretty cool. I don't know if the game's anything, but the art is pretty rad. Right on. 
Right on. Uh, 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 uh. Have we played Dungeon Drop recently, Funky Psy? Uh, no, we played mm, two or three weeks ago, probably. Um, and then I'm going to show Karen here before we played on Tuesday. Uh, so I haven't, uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to. I haven't, we haven't played a ton of games in general. Um, but uh, yeah, and Cheryl, does Nick fly back tonight? I think he flies back tomorrow because he was always going to miss the Monday stream. So yeah, I think he's flying back tomorrow. Because they're going to be, he's going to stick around to do takedown, which I suppose is well underway, but it usually takes a while, longer than it should. But uh, yeah, so he usually sticks around to do that because then we get paid, which is great. Um, Frosty Fire says, also on a side note, picked up Welcome To, and I enjoyed my first playthrough on Friday. It was National Bourbon Day, so lots of drinking and everyone playing a new game is a great time. Speaking of that, uh, I played two games of Welcome To just before this stream, then walked over to come do this stream. And we were <laughs> playing it with a group that had been wanting me to play it with them again because we played on New Year's Eve. And some of the people trying to play had imbibed uh, a bit, probably too much to take in the nuances of the game and all the rules. And so they're kind of like, we really want to try again this time. We'll be more focused. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. So <laughs> it was really good, and I did horrible. First game was okay. The second game fell apart. I, I just couldn't make up my mind what I was trying to do, and I did it real bad. But I love that game. And, uh, yeah, just played two, two uh, goes. Uh, my favorite, roll and write, flip and fill, what have you, draw and draw uh, to date. Love that game. Um, uh, yeah, and Funky Sab, we're going to play it on Tuesday uh, at 6. We're going to play that and then some other games because Dungeon Drops is real fast. So we'll play a couple games of that probably and then something else. Um, just back paraphrase sounds like fun, uh, says Helen. Yeah, like I like I like games like that where I've done I've done rounds in uh, this game is broken when I'm hosting that does that where I rename a popular board game with uh, synonyms for all the words in it. So I did like plasma violence for blood rage, you know, stuff like that. So uh, I love games like that which make you kind of rethink. Um, so yeah, it'd be pretty awesome. Pretty rad. Yeah. Dave Phillips says Canadian dollars? I'm honestly surprised they have currency. I just assume they paid with everything with pleasantries and don't you knows. And also, uh, there's a maple syrup black market that is frankly problematic, but they're so charming that we just let them have it. You know, we're like, hey, just you guys are cute. Just keep doing what you do. But uh, yeah, their money ain't real. <laughs> they tried to hand it to me. I said, I don't know. You got the queen on there. I don't know who do you who do you even believe in. It's just, it's just not, uh, it's not. It can't be real. Um, Rashi says it was awesome. Yeah, that sounds fun. It's National Bourbon Day. I had no idea. Um, and who forgot to use any two dice as a coin, etc. That might fix uh, nation's dice. Oh. That is good. So a while back we were talking about how there's a couple of roles where people were having really bad luck and they couldn't uh, couldn't do anything. But now I guess there's a mechanic in there where it's like you can use any two dice as money. That is nice because sometimes if you get stuck, you're like, well, at least I can buy something this round and keep moving toward the future. That's good to, to know because that's a bummer. <laughs> um, Frosty Fire says, I went all in on curb appeal and it paid off. I don't know. Uh, 40, 45 points is good for an end score, but I won. Frosty, hey, any score that is a victory is a victory. That's a good score indeed. So, And going park life, as Nick and I call it, where you upgrade those landscapings can never be bad. It's just points in the bank. Fun in four hours. That seems slow for a Jurassic World game, but this is Jurassic World, the miniatures game. Based on Jurassic World and Jurassic Park Saga, it's done quite well for itself. Good on them. Sweet. I just want to see, like, minis and how and what. Okay. Two to four players, 30 to 90 minutes. 62 bucks will get you the game. Not too bad for a minis game, to be honest. Uh, okay. Bird coming in saying, what? What's that? Uh, Jurassic World Miniature Game is an ambitious project where the goal is to fully immerse players in the universe of both the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park franchises. The game attempts to combine the specific characteristics and tendencies of each hero and dinosaur and re reproduce them as closely as possible. Just give me that Jeff Goldblum mini. 
we're gonna this is gonna sell games on games for that you just know it uh, use both hero and action cards to add to the action provide players with a truly cinematic experience players have the option to build their epic campaigns from the given scenarios based on the movies alternatively or alternative yeah I can read uh, they can develop their team if dinosaurs uh, and skirmish uh, they can develop their team with dinosaurs maybe oh, and skirmish freely with opponents okay cool all these choices and all these dinosaurs are yours to command if you dare Hi, I'm Mr. DNA, and I'm here to assist you through your Jurassic World Kickstarter journey. If it's your first time on Kickstarter, click here. I want to see the minis. Give me the mint. Clever Girl Pledge. Rad. Oh, the Fallen Kingdom or Domination expansion. Do you have to choose one of the two? How would you know which one to choose? You do have to choose. That's kind of lame. I wouldn't know which one to choose. It's a neoprene board for player boards, dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur cards, excuse me, mercenary cards, 44 state cards, 128 hero cards, condition cards, raptor cards, triceratops cards, big old man. Okay. Those dudes that get eaten. Those, those faceless dudes. Raptors. Okay, pretty cool. Carniosaurus. He's like doing like a gentlemanly bow. He's just like, Madame, with his arm. I kind of like that. 58 millimeters. Traceri, 72 millimeters. Even better. That's pretty dope. See, so a four units with complete distinctive play styles experience the leaping speed of the raptors, the unstoppable charge of the triceratops, the furious melee abilities of the Carniosaurus, or help. Mercenaries, stay away from harm's way. Stay out of harm's way would be a better sentence, guys. Using their uh, hypodermic rifles. <laughs> okay. Each of them has dedicated decks of action hero cards. So you get some chain of actions and prevail. Okay. Okay. What do we think, guys? Are we into Jurassic World? Are we into it? Um, uh, uh, Frosty says, uh, I went all, uh, da, 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 I'm sorry, where can we suggest Kickstarter games for Mike to per peruse on the stream here in chat, Discord? Uh, you can throw it in the Discord if you want, and I can have it here. Um, and I'm keeping up here with chat. So yeah, actually just throw it in the chat, Frosty, especially if you have it ahead of time, and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll do that. And whatever that link is, da, 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 the few, uh, the few and cursed board game, just help me, remind me. Jennifer says, uh, greetings here from Minnesota. Got here late, but I'm glad to be here. We're happy to have you. We're, uh, we're just cruising through some Jurassic World minis game right now. So, I mean, I mean yeah, it looks cool. We got Owen and Claire. Sweet. So, Raptor. Raptor. The Indoraptor. Super Raptor. So there's a Fallen King, so you get that stuff from the new. Get some blue. Domination. Where is Jeff? Only thin gold bloom. 104. That's pretty rad. That's badass. That's badass, man. That's pretty cool, too. Okay. Sweet. So I can fight the, the, the Dominus Rex or whatever, and the T Rex can battle it out. Main gate. Sick. Okay. I don't know. Skirmishes. Uh, Roland, that's cool. You can get him. That's sweet. Stiggy. Sweet, 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 sweet. Do they have that gold bloom, though? That's pretty tight. Nick would be into that. That's his favorite dinosaur right there. The Anki Lee. Sure. All oh, the six triceratops. What are you going to make me cry for? Don't give me that. Uh, okay, cool. I'm over it. <laughs> Blake, Mike, hype! What to do? What it do? Um, and Frosty says, I haven't caught the past Let Hearts in a while, so I'm not sure what they've covered before. Uh, just throw stuff out. I'll let you know if we have. And if we have, well, let's go over it again if it's still live. Uh, Tim says, I keep forgetting this is on YouTube. Yeah, it's still new. I, I try to remind people, and uh, I totally forgot to put a reminder in the Discord itself, so that's on me. Uh, but we're on YouTube now. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, Tim said, I kept waiting for a Twitch notification. I'm so sorry. Uh, you're my boy, Blue. You're my boy. Um, <laughs> Alan says, I'm also worried about the rules for that Jurassic World game because the English isn't that good in the, uh, in the uh, on the Kickstarter page. Yeah, it's always like a little, hmm. Uh, and Cheryl Rawl says, the more I saw of it, the less interested I got in the Jurassic World. Yeah, I mean, it like looks the part. Like, obviously, you know, it's IP and it, it's got all that, but... I just was, uh, I don't know. Right on, it's a little skirmish game with dinosaurs and stuff. I'm like, cool, I have Raptor, and there's other things that'll, I'm sure, be Jurassic Park related soon and stuff, so it's, I'm fine. Ano Verbis or Urbis or whatever, the fight for Rome. Let's see. Strategy board game based on ancient Rome with lots of miniatures and interesting mechanics. I kind of like the the uh, underplayed way they do this. It's got it's lots of miniatures. It's got some interesting mechanics. It's like, yeah, you're not, not being all like, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> uh, two to four players, 60 to 90 minutes. Right on. That's kind of cool looking. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of into the, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's cool. Yeah, let's go. Back to Rome. Rome. Ancient Rome. 4th century AD, it's stormy period in the Roman Empire. The quiet of past centuries is only a memory. The struggle for the title of emperor is increasingly harsh. In the capital of the empire, the most important gens, gens, I don't know, do not miss a chance to try to increase their power and be able to influence the new Augustus as much as possible. Despite political instability, each faction wants to enlarge its possessions and is not afraid to face also armed clashes with bloody battles later. Forgotten the windings of the official historiography. Meanwhile, the arena and the gladiators are important. Faces in the fight for the power. The people worship their idols. Yes. How much does this go for? Deluxe edition for a hundred and eleven. How much for base ass? Same same. Okay. Let's see about this game. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, big map, little area control, fighty fighties, whatever that is in the middle. But then there's like this. What's oh, is this like a gladiator arena? What? Okay. In this beautiful map, you can see the heart of ancient Rome, in which you will place the miniatures of the seven hills. Air, huh? Yeah, so they have the arena, faction boards, big old rule book. Resource cards, gladiators, divinities, okay, tokies and things and stuff, and how do we play? Definitely like the look of the videos, they're kind of cool. Don't love when games have slaves. I know it was a thing, like it's based in history, but I'm just kind of like, ah, don't want to play games like that. Uh, you're different like Augustus and stuff, or whatever this guy is. I do like the look of the minis, though, they're pretty cool. For my money. Uh, so lots of stuff going on, it seems like. You get... Really? You get all these <laughs> sweet minis and just like... And wooden bits. Wooden blocks. But they don't look like... This doesn't look like a settlement. But they're going to put a lot of focus into their hills. Fair enough. Uh, rad. Rad, 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 rad. All right, sorry. Screw it. Oh, dude, Slivers. Slivers' mom lives in uh, Park Rapids. That's rad. Uh, the best component about the Jurassic Park board game uh, Kickstarter, in my honest opinion, uh, is the logo looks accurate. Yeah, like that's what I mean. Like that stuff all looked like, like it should, you know. And then. Uh, the rest of it was kind of like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. So anyway, this game, how are you, like, rolling dice or doing action cards and stuff, I guess? And there's cards and all these things and things. Is this the same thing again? Did I scroll up on accident? Or is this the regular? Oh, this is not. Okay. Well, then where's the gameplay? We're going to do Nick. This is Nick when he starts saying, how do you play the game? No, but how? Oh, now we're here. We are an hour later. 
We know it's 60 to 90 minutes for two to four players. You son of a bitch. It's the same things over and over. I'm over it, guys. I was out anyway, but I'm over it. Dwarven Miner Reforged. Okay, hold on. Someone sent us Dig Your Way Out. Let's check this out, right? Get on. Get, get, get. Okay. Oh, man. Look at these folk. This has to be, this has to be an old boy, right? This is, what's his name? Person who does like Raise the North Sea and stuff? Has to be that guy. Dig your way out. Fast paced strategy board game where players compete to be the first to break out of prison. Very cool. Uh, uh, two six players, 45 minutes to play, 37 bucks with some shipping on top of that. Okay. Five beating tokens. <laughs> Like you're gonna beat someone in the prison. Cigarette tokens! <laughs> That's hilarious. Is that the money in the game? Right on. You get all these different cards. Like tools and things, maybe. Into that. Big old prison board. And your little standee folk. Dude, I don't want to be this old one. And the officer buster standee. A free mini expansion. Rad. Okay, anyway, and, okay, yeah, 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 okay. You have to literally dig your way out of the prison, sweet, sweet. Uh, if you don't want to dig your hole with spoons, you'll need tools, which you can either craft from whatever you can scrap in the prison, buy them with cigarettes, or if you're well-armed, extort them from other players. Like tools, weapons have to be improvised, crafted, and bought with cigarettes. This is interesting. Okay, dig your way out involves bluff and memory as players have to keep track of everybody's cards. Who's got tools to dig? Who's got blades to fight? Oh man, brutal. Jesus. So you can learn how to make a shank in this game. Uh, help you escape, you can join a gang and use your secret skills and connections uh, uh, from your past life. Really believe it'll do what it'll do, or you know, so you got bandana and things and mast and stuff. Uh, moving to a zero place in the prison, you can perform many actions to build your own strategy. Again, if you're gonna like get you know resources and build tools, or you're gonna, just gonna be like, build, dig me out of here, man. Uh, sweet tantrum did a little rundown on it, okay. Interesting. Uh, right on. The page says Jurassic World miniature game is in development uh, and subject to licensure approval. Oh, so they might get shut down by like Universal or something. That's interesting. That's really interesting. <laughs> just funny, I had to get that last game just for that one die that it came with. Yeah, that was a sweet die, man. Uh, anything look good over the past hour, Tim? Um, some stuff's okay. Nothing, nothing crazy. I'm not in a. I'm not buying anything that I've seen personally, but uh, someone backed uh, Paraphrase, which is like a music game where you have to change the title to things that are similar. Like they gave authentic pigmentations for true colors, and then you can get points if you can name the person and sing it, stuff like that. So like a little party game. That seemed cool. Um, <laughs> Sir Ross says, "How do I play the game?" Now it feels like the Brothers Murph on Kickstarter. Yeah, it's like. It's sometimes it's so far buried. I'm like, but I, I'm not going to buy this unless I know what I'm doing. I don't need to read the rule book, but like I want to know something about the game. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just frustrating if they don't give you some of the deets. Give, give, you know, give me a taste first. That's what we're here for, right? It's a starting off point. Okay. Heavily inspired by the taste for eclectic games, uh, says David Simid, 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 some of the French. Simid. Uh, that's out of time, anyway. Uh, they want to create an immersive and fun game on an adult theme. It does feel adult. Like, the whole, like, making shivs and stuff for me, and I'm not, like, overly prudish. I'm kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> um, But there's nothing wrong with games that are, like, for kids. I'm all about that. There should be games for, you know, for over the whole range. Only for kids, only for adults, and everywhere in between. 
Hardcore gamers as well as casual gamers is the, the kind of what they're going for here. Get a little bit of everything. From a simple card game, it became this board game that builds up tension and makes you almost as unsafe and as in a real prison. After years of design and testing, you can paper cut each other with the card. It's really dangerous. Testing with hundreds of players all over France, the prototype won several prizes. Sweet. Good for them. Uh, the famous art, uh, artist of the Miko gave it life with some awesome illustrations and colorful characters. Dig Your Way Out is more than ready to be published. The artwork. Makes sense to focus on the artwork. Given of our famous artist who was very hot. That's pretty cool. So they're, they're, they're doing a lot to say it's been thoroughly play tested. We've got awards where it's play testing. And trust me, people have played it and tested it. And I'm like, okay. You're really making me know that it's been play tested, which almost makes me worry. But maybe that's a you know mental trick that I shouldn't worry about. But it's it is what it is. All right. So uh, dig your way out. Are we interested? Do we like it? What would I say it was? How much did it cost? It wasn't expensive. Thirty seven bucks. Good price. Kind of cool. Kind of interesting. I don't know. What do we think? <laughs> this game looks mega lame. It's a hard pass for me. All right, all right. Is it for people that for it's a hard pass? Is it the theme? Is it what's uh, what's not quite clicking? For me, it seems fun to be like one that like if a friend had it, I'd, I'd totally play it. I don't know if I'd uh, buy it myself, but yeah. I like the idea of like the cigarettes, you know, currency and stuff like that. I mean, it feels like. It feels like you're. It feels like a jail TV show, if that makes sense. Like, it doesn't seem to actually try to make people understand and learn about what it's like to be incarcerated. And it's not something that I personally am like, oh, like, let's have fun with this, because, like, no, prison isn't, like, a cool place at all uh, for people. And so. You know, like someone watched a lot of like Orange is the New Black and Oz and they're like, I can make a show based on this. I'm like, all right, yeah, cool, cool. But also people don't have a good time in there. So I don't know. It doesn't set well with me personally. But for folks that are into it, right, right the hell on, man. Untamed Feral Factions. Let's check it out. Again, colors. Get bright. I'm into it. Um, yeah, Alex, I mean, people seem like they're into the, the mechanics and stuff seems good, but the theme and all that, um, not so much. Yeah, that's where I'm at with it. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Wizard Teeves, Moniker, Serious Nonsense, with Shut Up and Sit Down. Is it like a Shut Up and Sit Down version of Monikers? I don't get it. But it made a lot of money. A lot of money. Good for them. Sovereign Skies, Exploration. <laughs> hmm. So Sovereign Skies is a deep water game. Interesting. I'm always interested to see what they're up to. It's done well for itself. Last Aurora. Post apocalyptic game in a frozen wasteland. I'm kind of interested in that. A little scorekeeper thing. That's kind of cool. Let's check out that. Zafir, our tactical role-playing game. Divorce Simulator. <laughs> right on. Come on, get your money. I want them to make it. Um, yeah, prison should have, uh, have rigorous plans to help people, not just cage them. Exactly, Joseph. That's, that's kind of my whole thing of like making a board game. Like, it just seems to gloss over the fact that a lot like our prison system is really kind of brutal and ineffective and we should be trying to help work with people and and give them skills and also like most people who are end up a criminal are coming from like significant trauma and like maybe let's give them some therapy and different things while they're there to work that out and maybe they'll be able to reintegrate and stuff so i'm kind of like i don't need a board game on that Sort of misses the point. Um, stockpile, listed investments and expansion. Okay, so it's like that's a game that exists. 
Uh, toilet tank. A funner way to potty. Nah. Nah. Uh, let's look at this. Let's, let's look. Okay, so untamed feral factions. Let's go back. Eh, 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 feral factions. Very pretty. Funded in three hours. Standalone shuffle building card battle game with beautiful artwork. Shuffle building card battle game with beautiful artwork. What the heck is shuffle building? It's got a shuffleboard in it. You play shuffleboard. Uh, okay. Definitely pretty. Definitely pretty. I mean, you can't go wrong with kind of like human animals type thing. Um, welcome to the wilds, Commander. Which of the great animal factions will you choose to be your allies? The scheming fox spies? The wealthy panda merchants? Obviously panda merchants. What are you, crazy? How, what Rhino barbarians? Uh, that's also pretty good, though. One of the most cunning, strong, and clever animals will be victorious in the Battle of the Wilds. Untamed Feral Factions is an accessible, standalone card battle game. So this must be based off of some other thing, right? I, I, clearly, if they keep saying it's a standalone thing, then it must be tied to something else. Two or more players where you build your deck by choosing and shuffling together three different animal factions. Okay, so kind of smash up? Is that the whole shuffle, shuffle building thing? Try to take down your opponent's strongholds by tactically playing animal and item cards. Use a unique support mechanic to fuel powerful card abilities, but be sure to manage your power carefully. The base game allows two to three players to enjoy a match of untamed feral factions. So it must be untamed must be a thing, and then feral factions are like new factions, and it can play on its own. That's what we're getting, I believe. Ah, oh, what's in the box? 96 animal cards. Nine stronghold cards, one per faction. Get some Edom cards, damage, fury, stuff, stuff, stuff. Dude. Okay, choose your animals. Choose three animal factions, shuffle them together, form your deck with nine animal factions. There are more than 100 deck combinations. That's cool. So you get three different types of animals, and you put them all together. Play your cards, battle your opponent, and unleash your support. Get the rule book. Play on Tabletop Topia, Tabletop Simulator. That's pretty cool, so you can get a really good feel of it. Oh, girl, game show! Tutorial! So we can watch, we can watch Kiki tell us about it. Now I can just ask her. I love it when when they've done something, so I can have Kiki and be like, yo, what's up with this? <laughs> I, I watch her video, but I was like, also tell me about it, so I know what I'm getting into when I watch it. Dude, this croc is ripped! Why play the Kickstarter? Uh, because this, this croc is dope. That's why. Like, literally, if I was running this campaign, this is why I don't get to do these things. I'd be like, I would just be like, look at that croc. Look at that freaking croc. Like, you tell him why you're not going to back it. And they'd be like, I'm backing it, obviously, because he's dope. I got no mechanics to tell you about. I just got to tell you about this dude right here. This guy's freaking bigger brother to this dude. So sick. Look at this guy throwing it up. Like, you tell me you're not going to go level three? I'm all in. I'm all in on this. <laughs> the art is really cool. Really, really cool. And there's all sorts of achievements and stuff. Look at that. The art is badass on this one. Yeah, I'm into it. I am into it. What do we think, fam? I could get behind it. And what did I say it was? How much? Thirty-four bucks for a double copy. Eighteen. Eighteen bucks for the game. I mean, like, seems cool. You can get two copies for thirty-five if you want to be able to double up how many people can play. I wouldn't really. I mean, it seems like a kind of like battle, like one v one. So you know, I don't know why you'd need to, but uh, yeah. Looks pretty fancy. Yeah. It just, I mean, like, looks rad. Looks can be deceiving, but it looks great. Very pretty. I don't know. It seems, and it seems kind of fun.
Hang on, folks. Let's check out Sovereign Skies by Deepwater Games. Not too, I mean, just like off base looks. <clears throat> like I look at this, I'm kind of like, all right, it's this thing is for I'm sure for other people like this type of stuff grabs you in, but this never has been super sexy to me. And I was kind of like, oh, it's kind of like spacey. Blast off into the world of Sovereign Skies, a medium weight strategy game for one to four players that plays in 45 minutes. I definitely dig the length. Very cool. New sci-fi world from Deep Water Gams. So you got some, uh, some art and stuff by people. This is kind of cool, this little middleboard thing. Uh, oh. So I guess that second set allows four to six player game for that other one. Um, in modes such as Hydra, Manticore, and large-scale versions of other game modes. Right on. That's cool. So 40 bucks, get the base game. May you die 1,000 times to rise 1,000 more. It's ancient Flameborn Ode. He's saying, Ode. May the tongues of flames which sear your heart turn themselves to sing their highest praise. What are we doing? High leads. Immersive and strategic game. Thought-provoking Euro strategy game. Multitude of strategies and decisions. Dynamic majority scoring. Tug of war with loyalty as you build your foothold. Okay. You gotta move that mothership. You gotta do it. You gotta take actions on the planet you're orbiting. You gotta do that. You gotta take some actions. You gotta gain that energy. You gotta recruit that senator. You gotta build that base. You gotta activate that base. You gotta pledge that loyalty. You gotta relocate. You gotta control them planets. You gotta increase your influence over that system. Tight. Bebo's talked about it. Go check out Bebo. JJ. Justin Jakes. Let's see what this guy says. Uh, we all know that the Rondell is an inherently cool mechanic. Well, the Rondell Driver Skies comes with a healthy dose of rocket fuel. Using energy to change directions or boost ahead of the rondelle adds a whole new level of decision making. You can usually get where you want, but is it worth the cost if it fits uh, into the spacefaring theme perfectly? Uh, if you like midweight euros, it's definitely worth one to check out. Okay, I gotta ask Jay, JJ about this one because uh, I didn't know. I mean, I guess I guess the, the whole this thing, the orbiting, is you on a rondelle. I do like games that are on a rondelle. I have quite enjoyed that sort of system. I think it's fun going around and around and trying to like figure out where you're going to stop when do you try to slow down speed up like great western trail you're trying to get to kansas city over and over and over again you're trying to like stop a lot of times along the way um so that's kind of cool okay my board tile so it's not always going to set up in the same order it looks like it's just these six spots all right i mean it's definitely a good price point i mean 40 bucks one box, not actually in the box. It's not a joke. Um, sweet. The wooden little motherships and stuff. Like, this stuff, like, this is cool. It's, it, we don't, I don't need anything more than that. That's just me being like a snob, being like, man, I don't really want the look. Man. That's pretty tight. Foil box variant. Unnecessary, but tight. <laughs> Get a play mat where you put the motherboard thing on, so that's cool. One thing that's nice, though, is if you don't have this, if you just have the, you know, the motherboard thing it takes up less space but here it makes it all look nice it's probably like easily organized and stuff so like definitely nice i like i love like games that have the neoprene mat i think it's a good move um yeah so sweet right on right on right on right on what's eric playing man probably sovereign skies based on this campaign all right what do we think, folks? So these are the six planets I guess you're going around. Looks cool. That guy's dope. That's rad. That's, that's terrifying right there. That's a little dream haunter. Scaring me. Shipping costs. Why is this going all weird? Doesn't matter. 
All right, that's Sovereign Skies. Right on. Good price point on that. I definitely like. There's been some. There's been some good prices today. You know, whether or not we've been into every single game, I feel like we hit a stretch there for a while where everything was just really expensive. And now I'm like, all right, man, forty bucks, forty five, things like that. I'm like, okay. You know, if we're gonna if you're gonna ultimately be taking a chance, because we never quite know. You know, when you're going a Kickstarter route, it's like, well, at least I didn't lose that much money. It's a low risk. You know, so you might as well. Last Aurora funded in eighteen hours. It's a frozen wasteland. I like. You know, post-apocalyptic things, it's been used a billion times. Uh, they've had desert, they've had water, but I don't remember it seeing, like, frozen. So I'm kind of cool. Kind of into that, kind of into that. He's got this little cage on his back, this dude. Pretty sweet. Um, oh, Dave Hope seems that awesome. Seems too legit. Too legit to quit, man. I'm not going to quit that campaign. Uh, yeah, it's our guy's going to look deeper. I think definitely worth a deeper look. Pretty cool. Yeah. Into it, into it. At first, I was like, brat, I'm out. But now I'm like, well, I kind of want to see it. The whole, like, again, the like, Rondell, the way you're kind of going around. I'm like, that I do, I want to know more about. So I'm going to have to ask uh, Justin Jacobson what he, what he thought and what he recommend. Boom. Okay. So you got your little Jeeps, your little battle Jeeps and things. Post-apocalyptic game, two to four players racing to escape this frozen wasteland that you're stuck in. It is uh, about double its goal, a little bit more even. Um... Definitely take the look, the art. All right, entering the last Aurora world is an awesome experience. You become the leader of a survivor's crew, trying to reach the Aurora, facing several challenges in your journey. In a great mix of game styles, you'll be forced to make difficult ethical choices, overcome obstacles, uh, fight unique and fearsome energy en enemies, and manage your resources during your movement across this frozen land. What's in the box? Core Pledge, Valley, Coast, and the Bay Area. Got to go to San Francisco. Got to get there. So 18 exploration first period, second, and third period cards. Start cards, object cards, enemy cards. Get some survivor tokens, some fuel. Aurora token. It looks like there is upgraded bits for sure because I saw like little gas cannies. I keep ripping this out even though I don't really need it. Um... Okay. Uh, convoy tokens. Come on, you know, you know, based on this, you know, you're getting set up for them. And look at these upgraded bits. Give me them bits. Die. Court game got funded. Plastic trucks to replace the wooden convoy. Turn counters. Give me them bits. Spot a UV on the board. Give me that bits in them UVs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Not including the retail version. Oh, yeah. That's different looking. That's thicker now. Look at that. Look at that thickness. 50 extra grams per card. We got grams on, grams on, grams on cards. But each leader have different artwork. Sick. Just fun. Don't probably need that, but like definitely love when that happens. Boom! Give me them bits. You gotta get to this. You gotta get forty-eight thousand to get these uh, plastic food tokens. Yes. That'd be a weird thing if you like didn't get there and you're like, this is nice. These are nice. Those stay the same. That's just a wood. I think they're probably the plan is to have them all come out. That's how they do these things. I mean, so okay, and let's get down a little bit. So how do we? So I want to know, like, what are you doing to, I guess, is it, so it's just it's a racing game? You're just trying to, like, burn and like, get through the whole, uh, map? Structure to be played in six rounds divided into five phases of 30-odd things. Every player has a board to manage his convoy and resources. Their convoy and resources. We got to get better about it. We got to get better. Truck zone is a zone where the player will combine their truck devices and trails. The active zone is where the survivors will be available to take actions. You have exhausted rest zone. It's for the survivors to recover from their efforts. Exploration phase. Let players enter the locations around you to perform different actions according to the value of the survivor sent. You will be able to gather location uh, resources from that location. 
Find useful components to upgrade your convoy, speed up your truck, improve the storage, and locate weapons and devices. Recruit them survivors and have access to their unique abilities and exploration support for the rest of the game. Perform an encounter, go and do some stuff. Then you can uh, choose between sending the exhausted survivor to sleep for a round to rest them or immediately recover them by spending food. I mean, I dig all like the stuff, and they get to move it, and it goes over here. It seems like well organized and stuff. So once you prepare to manage your crew for the next round, it is time to turn on your engine. In the movement phase, you spend fuel to move according to your current truck configuration, adding bonuses, actions, and special objects to accelerate. Get that acceleration going, I guess. You have to choose the best road to avoid contaminated locations. You'll face many powerful enemies during the game who will attack and damage your convoy. Uh, in the fire weapons phase, you will fight these dangerous enemies using your ammunition to activate uh, your specialized weapons, which will improve your fame and yield loot cards. And beware in the last phase of the round, the Aurora will move along the coast. If you can reach it, you'll gain reputation according to the number of survivors you save. If not, dangerous travel awaits you toward the south, and your convoy uh, strength will be more valuable. This seems cool. I mean, the way it's all broken down, Mark Street. Praise be to Mark Streets. Um, because I, I, I like, I like these kind of apocalyptic games that aren't uh, just like fight, fight, fight each other. But you're like trying to, you know, there's bandits. Like that's one thing I really liked about Wasteland Express Delivery Service. Is just, it's a pick up and deliver game in this world that's really colorful. But it's not just like nuking each other. It's like no, there's bandits and stuff. But that's like the the game messing with you. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> David Phillips, catching up with the chat here, says, uh, funny that I'll balk at a $70 game, but seriously consider the $70 deluxe version of a $40 game. <laughs> so true, though. Seems uh, uh, more affordable even though it's not. Yeah, either way, you're going out 70 bucks, but you're like, but it's, it's fancy as heck. Yeah, and I'm definitely uh, susceptible to that kind of thing, and I'm like, I think... If the games are the, the same enjoyment level, right? This $40 game and the $70 game, I'd probably want to get the $40 game and have it be really upgraded and nice looking. Probably kind of silly, maybe, but like, I'm like, I just, I'll feel like I got more out of that $70 versus a $70 game that's standees. I'm going to be like, don't want that, you know? So I think it's a, makes you feel like you have it's a good value that's what i think maybe that's the trick uh fred said let it go let it go gonna shoot some mutants in the face uh, uh i'm filter gamer uh, i like your swagger hey i like your swagger too you're probably not still here but i'm glad you stuck in there for a little bit happy to to see ya um and helen says i feel you on that um i found myself increasingly passing on things unless i truly love stuff um uh, and Helen's found myself increasingly coming back to wooden bits. They take less room to store and just feel good to manipulate. Wooden pieces do feel really good in the hand. They do. Um, there's some connection to the earth you feel in there. Uh, and they're, they're nice. That's one thing I really like about Haba games is they're a toy company and they make like wooden toys. And so all of their games have like chunky wooden bits and stuff. And it's nice. It feels good. Um, better than plastic ever really can. Like, I get very, like, I want the little plastic, like, fuel cans because they look like a fuel can and stuff. But, like, yeah, the wooden, there's something to be said for that. You know, there's something to be said for that. Um, and Jeremy says, okay, but I would just play Wasteland Express. I mean, that's the one thing about this. I mean, obviously, they're not the same game at all, but similar enough that I wonder, like, would people like, I already have Wasteland Express delivery service. I don't need another game in this kind of world. I don't know. Um, and Alan says, man, I'm a lady, and I actually find the increasing use of there to be annoying. Uh, he sla his slash man is the generic and easier to follow for me, but that's me. Uh, I need to get back to Wasteland again. Uh so that's funny. That's that's funny that it is. To me, it's like I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm being too woke or whatever. But it's just like why why specify a certain gender when you don't need to specify any? Just say there. 
his or her thing. It's like no more effort to do. And for other people, it might matter. I don't know. But I mean, that's the whole thing about it. Like, we're complicated people. Nothing is going to please everybody. But I'm like, I, for my money, you spend no more energy to just keep it open to all. So I like when I see it. But there's no right or wrong. Uh, live counter scorekeeper. It's just like a little 3D printed jab. A ratcheting dial system display your current life points. A great thing about ratcheting style system is score can be saved uh, in a game. That is kind of true. So, I mean, how much are these going for? Single counter? Are these 3D printed? That's what it looks like. Get six basic colors and stuff. I mean, these are cool. I mean, something that I'm sure we could print. I don't need to get these things. They're kind of beefy. That's cool. Right on. Sick. Right on. Anyway, that's that. Uh, let's find a couple more here, then we'll wrap this on down, folks. Has there been anything that I have missed or that you've heard of and are interested? I'm going to go find Dungeon Drop before we go for sure. Um, but I just want to know before we get on out of this thing. That guy is just dope. Don't know anything about this, but I guy's just like, Yes, these paints! Get acrylic. Trouble in Temple Town. Otis, the rise of the corruption. Cooperative adventure and tactical board game. Okay. Europe divided. Mugshots. Florida Man Edition. Rad. Rad on. Sorry, I'm not getting overly. Uh, oh, there you went. Princess dies. Those are very pretty. I like beasts. You can always find some good dice on Kickstarter. Pretty much um, a guaranteeing tea. Beast of the Emperor. That's cool. Some some RPG stuff. A lot of a lot of D and D stuff right now little uh, accessories and upgrades and things to help you along the way. Nutstash! Will you crack up on Cracked? Uh, Fred says, Dungeon Drop, I backed. Yeah. We're going to have to check that one out. It's cool. Well, Season 2 is out. Jeez. It's done well for itself in the second go. Um, I, I'm sure that I know the first one didn't quite do what they were hoping it to, which is nuts when they made millions of dollars to think of, but yeah. Batman's got the feel of like our general movies of today where everyone's just like doing these huge franchises that are all bombing because everyone's like, I don't need another one of these. And they're like, oh, whoops, y'all didn't want more X-Men? Shit. <laughs> we spent $200 million on it before marketing. All right, end drop. All right, so we're gonna play this in uh, on Tuesday. Uh, it's a really quick little game um, that uh, <laughs> can be so very messy, but it is fun. And luckily, like on our game topper, we have walls all the way around it, so it catches everything. Uh, Dungeon Drop was a day one back for me, uh, says Helen, and Fred said that they had as uh, uh, backed it as well. Instant Dungeon, infinite possibilities, a delightful dungeon crawler for two to four players. Done very well for themselves. Jeez, Louise. They don't need no help from us, that's for damn sure. Um, nice people, man. Jason's up. People we've talked to have been really cool. So this is cool. So what you're going to see here, and I'm sure they'll have a little um, little giphies of it. Basically, all these cubes that are on the screen uh, aren't there at the beginning. And you literally take all these bits and you put it about a foot above the table and just drop it. And they just go and explode out um, all over the damn place. And now you have a, a kind of a race, uh, a class, and then a quest that you're going for. So and they'll give you a certain amount of life and ability. Your little class will give you a little ability as well. And then your quest is going to be, um, you're basically, there's gems like these whites, uh, whites, pinks, and blues. And it's going to be something of, it's basically going to assign the value of those for you. Like the, the pinks are worth three points, so maybe go for a lot of pinks. And then there's like dice, which are... Uh, 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 like keys I think and they're worth 
however many points are showing on the pips and stuff, if you can get a chest to mix it with, or it's the other way around. <clears throat> it's a chest maybe of, of treasure, and then you have to find a key, which is an orange one. And uh, it's just fun. So let's see if they have some of the gifts here to show you how it works. And it comes as like, I guess, a little square box or something. Um, and you've got these like little bitties. Uh, and for 16 bucks, that's what's cool. It's super cheap. It's like, it's like a five or 10 minute game at the max, which is cool. Um, so you got like goblins and trolls, which can hurt you and stuff, but uh, can be worth points. There's a dragon, which will like kill you unless you have some armor, but that's like worth points. You got these gems and gold. Yeah, these are the keys. These guys and then the treasure chest. You have to match a key with a chest and they'll be worth that whatever many points are showing on the die. Um, and the way it works, oh, that's pretty tight. Get little faces on there. That's adorable. Oh, those upgrade bits are pretty sick. I like that. Uh, let's see if we can find, let me scroll up. Where's, how do you play? There we go. So you create your hero. I think you get a couple options um, and you put together the two things you want. You get your quest and you keep it a secret. And it's going to show you like, yeah, that's what your stuff's worth. And you have some other like, gold's worth two time or something like that. Then you drop and it creates the dungeon for you. And then on your turn, you're going to drop a few more things into the dungeon, which might, you know, move stuff around or just add more things. Um, and then you can do, uh, I believe, either your hero, your your uh, race ability or your class ability. I think you have to choose which one you do. And one might be like, you can pick something up this way. And then the way this works is like with triangulation. So there's all these black cubes. And basically, you're going to find three of them. Like there's one here one here and one here and then everything that's within those three invisible lines that you would draw or kind of make that little mental area you get to pick up um and you hope to pick up stuff that's valuable and not get beat up by goblins and trolls unless you have something that allows you to like score points that way um and then you get like i said shown here all the stuff that's on the inside so you get gold and these people got hurt a couple times like these little goblins hurt them so they covered up some of their life you get the loot, um, and then, uh, yeah, and then so this heroic teamwork. I don't know what this part is. We don't have any of this type of stuff. Um, so there's, like, people jumping in, so that's kind of cool. So on each other player's turn, place a hero meeple anywhere in, in the dungeon at any time before the active player's turn. Gain teamwork bonus. Uh, when the active player forms a room containing your hero meeple, you gain a victory point at the end of the game, so that's cool. Like, we don't have that in the one we have. So obviously some stuff has changed. And it's just this cool little thing. Like you play, um, if it's still the same way now as it was uh, for the rules that we have, you play like three quick rounds, then you're done. Like great little filler, um, you know, and you just are adding little things to the dungeon and like finding, you know, what's the best thing, you know. You can't choose like the whole dungeon because whatever your three things are, point one, two, and three, there can't be any other of the pillars within that area. So, you know, you have to kind of find the biggest thing you can with uh without um you know grabbing a bunch of stuff that's gonna hurt you so um uh, this game does exactly what it sets out to do it says the unfiltered gamer who uh was in here this guy he's a nice guy we met him a couple weeks ago cool dude um yeah so uh yeah it's fun we're gonna play it on tuesday me and karen um it's again a really quick game so we'll be playing other games as well but it's like it's cool and it's like 16 bucks which is sweet to have like a like this is like this will be really fun for a family because it's kind of messy and silly and stuff like that so i love that it's like so cheap and <laughs> they have always like little add-ons and silly things um yeah so uh we'll play it for you guys and and see um, i'd be curious to get other people's thoughts on it and stuff because uh, we played it, and it's, like, cute. It's fun. Um, and at the price that it is, like, it's definitely, like, cool. Like, if it was more money, like, you know, I might not be as inclined to grab it. But for that money, I'm like, hell yeah, dude, 16 bucks. Get some fun stuff, drop it. Art style's cute. Why not? So that is Dungeon Drop. Uh, yeah, and it hit a bunch of stretch goals. Like, it, it's done, I, mean, I forgot. So what was it going for, and what did it make? I mean, it's done incredibly well. It's going for 9000 It's kind of over hundred grand. It's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's see how the stretch goes down here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so it just creates this big mess on the table. It's kind of awesome. I respect it. Yeah, they've gotten a 
Let's see, got inside printing now. Stretch, dump, 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 dump. Stretch goal, stretch goal, stretch goal, stretch goal, stretch goal. Lots of stuff. Pretty sweet. Alternate game modes. Nice. Sweet. All right. Uh, that might be it, folks, unless we're going to check out Pigeon uh, Apocalypse. We're going to end on that, obviously, because look at that guy. Um, and then we'll we'll wrap this thing out real quick. So what's Pigeon Apocalypse about? This, this, this whole game came up for, like, someone woke up from a dream and saw these eyes seared into their into the, the eyelids of them. They're like, I can't, I can't get those eyes in my head. I have to create the game to make the dream stop. Pigeon Apocalypse is coming. A novel card game about the battle between nature and humans. Also about pigeons and apocalypses. It has a hit goal, which is a damn shame. Fun card game about park about a park fighting human intruders. Okay, so you're the pigeons. You're trying to say, get out of here, humans. Right on. City cards, park cards. This squirrel has a rifle. This dude is slanging grenades. Uh, they all have grenades. <laughs> How does it work? Everyone draws two cards. Uh, unexpected intruders in the park are in the center of the table. You get to be surprised. Yeah. You got Robert the dog. Attack with your army of nature. <laughs> Squirrel warrior. Oak mercenary. So you're going to assign cards to the intruders and flip them over. Whoever attacks with the most power wins the intruder. Okay, so you're trying to like collect bodies and stuff. That's cool. There's a truck, nuclear boost. So you play Pigeon Apocalypse with level 100. Whoever gets the most visitors wins the game. <laughs> it's just silly enough to absolutely work. It's absolutely silly. And for 25 bucks. Why not buy it for your friend that isn't a board gamer that's going to be there right at the Exploding Kittens level? Why not? What up, Rolf Hacker? Rolf Hacker? Hackler? Hackler? Uh, why not? You know? Kid-friendly version? Sure. Not safe for work edition. They always do this, and I'm like, oh, it's kind of, it's kind of inappropriate. You know? <laughs> like, see, it says, not really suitable for children. Like, it's fine. But maybe not. It's like just get the regular game. Um, boosted version. Like, get this for a stocking stuffer, or send it to a friend. And then play it. But then you're like, well, I don't care if I don't like it. It's not my game. <laughs> uh, right on. Okay, Pigeon Apocalypse. I had to click it. Those eyes uh, just were going to stick with me for a long time. That is a, the eyes of a madman right there. Uh, okay, thank you so much for joining me for uh, Kickstarter Let Heart, folks. Uh, this is super fun. Again, happy Father's Day to everybody. That's out there. Uh and um, I'm going to be live tomorrow at 5, live at 5 on Gen Con's Twitch channel. So we'll be back on Twitch over there at Gen Con TV. Um, and I'll be playing a solo game. I don't know. What should I solo? Does anyone have any ideas? Maybe we'll do Ex Libris because Nick has always talked about it. And I uh, have always wanted to try it because he says it's such a good solo edition. So I maybe I'll do Ex Libris. I made my mind up just now. That's how it goes. Um yeah, so you got to be there. Got to come on down. Uh, and Helen says, if it's not safe for work, generally causes me to pass right on by. Uh, my kids can't see it. I'm not into it. Yeah, same. It's like, I, for me, it's more I don't have kids, so, you know, and I'm not overly worried about that. But it's like, it's just, it's never, <laughs> it's like not safe for work. I'm like, yeah, except for it pretty much is. Like, any adult would be like, okay, like, there's not going to be anything that's like truly offensive in it. So I'm like, why bother? Like, if you're going to go for it, go for it. I'm probably not going to be interested in it still, but like, go for it. I just, I get kind of frustrated. I'm like, it's weak. It's not, it's not that, uh, not safe for work. <laughs> I'm not that, I'm not that upset by it. So I'm just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyways, get back to it. I'll be live again tomorrow. Uh, thank you uh, for your time, says Jennifer. Thank you for your time. What are you talking about? I'm just here. I'm just a vessel. I'm literally just rambling on for two hours by my damn self, uh, having a great time with y'all and the fact that anyone would stop and listen is uh, a blessing. So, uh, thank you. It says, I love streams like this. We love doing it. That's why we moved it over to YouTube. Uh, just cause we got, uh, a lot of folks we could potentially reach and have a nice chill stream. I love doing it. I love doing this. Uh, it's a weird thing to say, but I love doing it solo. It's really fun to kind of, I literally just like talk nonstop and I'm sorry about that. If you need me to shut it for a minute. 
and it's just it's kind of a peaceful thing just to be with the chat and like going through stuff and just musing about things like I wonder if man, maybe this would be kind of cool you know it's just it's very fun for me so uh, thank you for that um, yeah folks I'm out of here enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening uh, get some rest before Monday we got another uh, week ahead of us here another busy week of work for moi put good vibes out there by the way um nick seems like he's had a pretty good and productive trip to origin so put good vibes if you don't mind sparing a little extra uh for us um as things uh are hopefully potentially getting uh getting going that are going to be uh cool opportunities for us so uh if you don't mind just saying hey universe why not just say why not uh that'd be great and uh i will see you all on the flippity flap in the pigeon apocalypse, we'll meet up in the park under the big oak tree that is also holding a saw. Uh, cheers, everybody. We'll see ya, and bye bye. <laughs>